So do you want to start creating cool artwork like these? You can actually get started with Midjourney. Midjourney is an amazing AI image generator that can help with creatives and businesses alike. You can do so much with AI tools like this, getting wonderful pieces of art and graphics with just a few prompts. Now, whether you're a graphic designer, artist, or even marketer, Midjourney isn't just for people who want to make cool art, but can be a handy tool for creating visuals in general. And of course, there are other AI image generators out there, which I covered in a different video. But one of the reasons Midjourney is so great is because it has a huge user database and it's actually quite easy to use. In this video, I'll briefly go over how to get started with Midjourney, but most of all, how to write prompts with Midjourney so you know what you're doing. If this interests you, stay tuned. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel so you can join the journey into AI. So like I said, there is a huge community, over 50 million users till today, where people can help you along the way and you can share your work with others. This means there are so many resources and people to learn from. It's really quick to learn and be part of this community. Midjourney also doesn't need to just be for the sake of creating, but it can be for trying to ideate and get some inspiration as well. So. Before we jump into the prompt section, I'll quickly refresh your memory on how to get started with this. I have covered this in a different video, but we'll start and go through it real quick. So number one, sign up, go to midjourney.com, click the join the beta, which will then send you to their Discord. Sign into the window, click the register link, and if you don't have a Discord account already, just make one. It's very simple. You can get started right away. Number two, join the Midjourney community. Once you're in, join the, join the community. And for those who are new to this Discord, just go to explore public servers and then search Midjourney and then you can find it and access it. Once you're in, then you just see a bunch of channels on the left. Click the newbie channel and just take a look at some of the images there. And then in one of the chat prompts, just type in slash subscribe and it'll take you to a page that will have all of the subscription plans. Um, I would say basic plans should be sufficient for most users, but once the payment goes through, you should be able to freely create. And you are in mid-journey, it's time to get started with writing prompts. So to get started with writing a prompt to generate an image, it's really as simple as just typing slash imagine. But before we begin writing some of these prompts, it's best to understand the general structure of mid-journey prompts because they're a little bit different from ChatGPT or other prompt services. This will definitely help you later down the road to really generate images that work for you instead of just getting general, typical images that don't fit your exact needs. So when it comes to describing your prompts, there are some things to know. As you can see from this screenshot from Discord's official site, the first text of what you should write should contain the basic description of what you want to imagine. Simply put, this is the main part of the prompt where you share your idea. Whatever you write here is what will be generated. Then keep it concise. What a lot of people get a bit wrong with Midjourney is that unlike ChatGPT, the description doesn't need to be so long. In fact, Discord themselves suggest that the Midjourney bot itself is most effective with simple short sentences. This does not mean that you should just write something as simple as possible. Because if you do that, the AI will rely more on the default styles existing in the Midjourney database. So as Midjourney states, concentrate on the concepts you want to create. Then there's word choice. When it comes to describing your prompt, take note that the Midjourney bot isn't super compatible with full on grammar or sentence structure. So what it takes into account is actually word choice. So be very careful with the words you use. And then of course, separate by commas. Instead of trying to write out an entire long description, which the Midjourney bot won't really process properly anyway, the way prompts work with Midjourney is to simply separate your description by commas. So let's just take this example of a prompt made. Through every key point of the illustration, the user separates by commas without really getting too long into each description. And then be specific. Now that you have a basic premise of what is required for a text prompt or description, next is learning to specify. The point of this is to really teach the Midjourney bot what exactly you're looking for. Remember, you're stylizing the image as you wish. So for example, if you want to make an image a specific mood, using words like calm, energetic, outgoing may be worth inputting. Or perhaps you want an image that takes place in a certain environment, then you'd probably include those details such as in a truck or outdoors. Whatever the case, be as specific as possible. And so to help you out, You'll probably notice on the screen, here's an example of a screenshot provided by Midjourney themselves of things to think about when describing your scene. 
Remember, think of yourself as a painter. And once you have a general outline of what you know you want to paint, you need to add some colors and make stylistic choices to make it look the way you imagine. So perhaps you want to be a bit more Victorian style or even hope to create something that is a bit more sketchy. By adding the relevant keywords, you can guide the AI to make an image that matches your vision. While there is no real set rule, it's probably best to add the style you want at the start of your description. So for example, slash imagine prompt, pixel art painting, a couple dancing in the street at night. And you can get an image as I show you on the screen. While that list I gave you earlier from Midjourney is great, some key points to consider are specifying the type of medium. So what type of medium do you want this image to come out looking like? Will it be a bit of a graffiti image? Will it be a pencil sketch or watercolor? Uh, let your inner painter inside tap into all the different mediums of art you can create and you can see some examples here. Then you can also think about the type of era. Are you looking to creating something more resembling to a specific era style? So art has a long history and depending on its period, the style may look different. So go back in time and make it clear on how you can add that into your prompt. Then there's also the type of emotion. If your image consists of a single focal character, such as an animal or a person within the frame, you can ensure that they are expressing the right emotions by using emotional words to describe it. And then there's type of color. Of course, you also want to ensure that the image may have a specific shade to it. So this is where you can provide some details on what color the image needs to be. Will it be two-toned? Will it be black? Will it be peach? These words need, don't need to exist as separate words, but can be included into your description of your character itself. So for example, I can write a graffiti, 1980 style, two-toned happy cat, and it'll put out an output like this. Then there's a type of environment. Perhaps you want the character of your image to be in a specific place. Well, simply describing where it is to be located by describing a specific environment is going to do that. Is it going to be inside? Is it going to be outside? Is it going to be on the moon, in the desert? So taking the earlier example, I can say a graffiti, 1980 style, two-toned, happy cat in the desert. And so you can see it's kind of mixed it up, showing putting it into the desert. So then, once you kind of understood the whole stylizing aspect to it, now it's next to tune your parameters. Now technically you could just put something out now, but let's say we want to tune the image a bit more, whether it's in size or quality, this is where the second part of generating your prompt comes in, which is tuning. In Midjourney, parameters are options or settings you can add to your prompt that affect how it's made. So these can range from the sizing, dimensions, to overall quality as well. And there's a whole range of parameters to choose from. Usually the parameters are added at the end of a prompt where you can simply add two dash lines and write down on the given parameter. Now I won't go all of them here since this video is just to help you get started, but some, some of the key useful ones to take note are aspect ratio. So this will change the overall aspect ratio or which shape your image takes for the generated output. This is the width to height ratio and is expressed in two numbers such as 16 to 9 or 4 to 3. Here's an example of all the different aspect ratios. Then there is version. Midjourney often upgrades its versions, so where its versions are learning to improve the quality and efficiency of its AI model. At the time of this video, it's actually at version 5.2, and so of course you want to ensure that the prompt is creating an output based on its current model. This way you can make sure it is pulling from its latest model's data. And so by adding a dash V5 at the end of the prompt, it will do exactly that. If not, you can also go into slash settings and change it from there. And then let's say you want to make sure certain items are not included from your image but can't seem to eliminate it in your output. Unfortunately, Midjourney's bot does not really listen well when it comes to orders of don't include this into your description. So instead of writing don't include A or B or C, it's better to add the no parameter at the end, which essentially tells the bot what not to include in your image. So taking the example of the prompt I used earlier, you can see that without indication of a no parameter, it'll take some liberties to add a moon in the background or two of the images. So on the other end, once I indicate for it not to include the moon with the no parameter, it actually takes away the moon. Although on the bottom right image, it did include the sun, but I guess you, I could specify that later as well. So with that, you are now well on your way to knowing how to write the perfect prompt to generate an image on Midjourney. But before we finish there, I may have lied to you at the start of this video. Now, remember when I said at the start of the prompt structure, it always begins with a strict description of the prompt? Well, technically, there is something that should come before that, and that is image prompts. 
These are essentially URLs of images that you can plug into Midjourney to help the bot use as a reference point. One of the reasons I left this part for later in this video is because technically this is only really used for when you want to get Midjourney to use said image as a starting base for when it adds on further details. So considering this is a beginner's guide to Midjourney prompts, I thought it'd be a bit com less confusing if I s f mentioned this later. So for the most part, while Midjourney can refer to image URLs you grab from elsewhere on the web, it does a better job when you take the screenshot URL directly from Discord itself. So the easiest way to do that is just simply drag and drop the photo and upload it up. From there, once you have it, just open up the image, right click and copy the link address. Then just like that, you paste it in the beginning of your prompt and right before you begin to right before you begin to actually write out the prompt. So that's all there is to it. I hope that was helpful. If you did find this helpful, make sure to like this video, share it to other of your friends that might be interested, and subscribe to this channel if you want to continue getting information on AI tools, tips and tricks to help you navigate the digital ocean of the future.